Uh, this shows how well the it's mix is penetrated by the wall, high pressure water. It is all you cannot see layers. It is not layered on. It's as if it were pumped or poured. This is a very important part in your gunite. It is not in layers. Whatever way you put it on is the way that it would come off. In other words, if it's in layers, it's going to sheet off. It's very important that it, it looks just as if it's been pumped or mixed in a mixer and poured. Anytime the gunning nozzle is stopped for operation, whether you're on a scaffold, whatever you're on, from the wetting point out to the nozzle tip should be pointed down. So if there's any leak, any water leak in the nozzle uh, nozzle valve, it does not go back down the hose into the gun. It must be dripping down on outside where it will not cause any problem. Always point the valve, assembly, wetting chamber, and everything down.
is this cut off? The main air supply hose is removed. Hopper is taken off. Agitator arms removed. Airline to the cone outlet body is removed. And this rip allows you to take the rubber pad assembly out. The rubber pad is checked for wear, which shows that it was adjusted properly. It's worn more on the lead edge than it is on the rem remaining part of the rubber pad. And it's a very uniform wear pattern, the full width of the pocket, which shows that you had it adjusted properly. If uh, you had deep gouge or tears in it, it would show that your rock shear was worn badly and it allowed big chunks of the aggregate to get in and actually just chew it up. If it had just grooves in it, it would more or less mean that you had it, didn't have it tight enough, and it was allowing small particles to get into like a stream and just cut across, cut deep beads all the way across it. If it uh, was uh, adjusted too tight, then you would have just ragged edges. It could be all through here just ragged, like almost as if it was squeezed down too tight and allowing the, the tears to be erratic throughout there. But this shows a very smooth, very smooth wear pattern and it's definitely more on the lead edge and it's very smooth all the way through. That socket here. It's not here, is it? Sir, how much life is left in that pad? <coughs> this this pad is reusable uh, for I would say with the same material. This pad is probably good for another three four hours. Uh, then you must check it because if it's starting to get deep, keep in mind I always feel that the pad is much cheaper to replace if you have a material that's uh, wearing the the uh, has a good uniform wear pattern, but it's definitely wearing it because keep in mind the more you wear this, the more you're going to wear the expensive steel wear plates. And I'd rather replace these at this pr at the price of these than to replace a wear plate. And keep in mind also that the wear plate is inch and a half to start with. You can turn that down probably seven eight times down uh, down to the minimum of one inch. But the deeper you groove the wear pad. The, the more you must take off on the grinding, and therefore you're going to get less turns out of that wear pad. And, and this, I'd better change these every four hours on a material that's very rough on them, and keep the wear pad, uh, I mean the wear plate, on and, and not have to replace that all the time. But this and the rock shear, it, it must be maintained at all times. And they're both cheap parts, I would call them cheap parts, when you, when you start comparing them to the price of a word plate or a bowl. I like to stress that because I'd, I'd buy a dozen of these rather than two or three word plates or a word plate. Yep. 
Then we must remove... <coughs> we must remove the rock here. This where <coughs> rock shear shows again that it's not worn at all, and it's good for uh, oh, I'd say another three four hours of steady gunning, just like we did there before. And this is very important, though, as this starts to wear. It's better to replace here again. It's a very inexpensive part, and much much uh, smarter to change this, put a new one on, and take a chance and run an old one and let jagged material get in the rubber pads and chew them up and eventually chewing up the steel plate. And a good way to repair these if you can, they get real bad, take and cut this right out and have a good nigh hard weld put in and then grind the surface again back to original design. That maybe will wear a little longer than the normal setup. Now we will remove the rubber pad housing. Again, it is good point to always check your wear pad, a wear plate rather, and see if you've had any serious problem with wear in here. <coughs> 